What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Get Paid for Your Pad, episode 583. Today, my guest is David Curtis. He is the founder and CEO of WeHost, a property management company out of Canada. He's in different markets, about 30 units under management. And today, we're going to talk about how do you structure a management deal with clients. So for everybody out there who's currently managing properties for others, or if you're interested in doing that in the future, then uh, pay attention because uh, David is going to share a lot of wisdom here around well, how, how do you create an offer? Like what, what percentage do you charge? How do you communicate with your clients? Um, how to work with clients in general. So David, welcome to the show. Uh, yeah. Thanks for having me, Jasper. Uh, first off, I want to say that super honored and uh, excited to be on the podcast. I've been listening to this podcast for a long time now. Uh, I'd say probably like four years or so. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to be here. Awesome, dude. I'm happy, uh, happy to have you. Uh, we've been uh, working together for a while now through Legends X, and it's been a pleasure. Uh, so I'm excited to uh, to dig a little deeper here into your business. Um, why don't you give us a big, quick background of how you how you got started with Airbnb and how you uh, expanded it uh, to the 30 units that you're managing now? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, my name is David. I'm the CEO and founder of WeHost. Um, I've been doing it since, or um, managing uh, short-term rentals since 2016, um, when I bought my first condo. And then uh, we've managed to attain uh, 30 listings from then to now. And um, the majority of the listings that we have are in St. John's, Newfoundland, where I'm from. And then we have uh, the rest in Calgary and Edmonton, where my managing or director of operations is from. And um, yeah, we've managed to build this uh, business all the while building a house, having two kids, um, getting married and working my full time job still. <laughs> oh, wow. Where yeah. do you find the time? Do you sleep at all? Or? <laughs> yeah, I do. I do work a lot, but um, yeah, it's been great so far. I enjoy it. It doesn't seem like work to me. Right. And so that first home that you bought, you bought it in 2016, you said like, what was that in St. John's? No, this was in Calgary. Um, oh, okay. So I, I, I bought a condo in Calgary and uh, I was working a seven, seven on seven off shift. So um, on my seven days off, I, I would uh, rent it out on Airbnb, and I got good at um, renting it from a, from a long distance, I guess, because I'd be up north. So then I bought another property in in St. John's, Newfoundland, where I'm from, and, and uh, yeah, it just snowballed from there, and people started asking me for help, and yeah, so we've been really, you know started we host and the past three years we've been really focusing on growth and uh you know creating systems and really building the business um so um i'm super excited to and proud of where we're at today and did you the units that you have now is like mostly through word of mouth or were you actively doing marketing to get more units um well i i think most most of them are through referrals, uh, but initially I went on, I scoured across all the um, rental listings in our areas and reached out to hosts. You know, I put in a lot of work reaching out to people and, and uh, that's how we grabbed our first few clients. And then from there, it was just all referrals. Um, so right now we're that's one of our main initiatives to work on marketing and uh, kind of build that up a little bit so that we can um, target across uh, Canada, like our goal. Right on. Yeah. And um, so when you, when you, uh, you say like a lot of referrals, uh, do you offer mm -hmm. your, your clients like a referral fee to incentivize them or? Yeah, we have, we have a referral fee. Um, We've tried it on uh, numerous, uh, we, we, we change it up and we'll probably change it up again in the future, but, um, 
the, some people uh, give a better percentage on the management fee for referrals. I've heard of people taking off 1% each time they get a referral. Um, we were doing something similar to that before um, and down to like a minimum of uh, 15%. Um, and then uh, we switched to just giving a $250 referral free each time we get a, a referral. So that's what we're, we're doing right now. Which works pretty good. We've we've getting a few referrals. I, I love getting refer, referrals because it's the best compliment, right? That you can get from a client. Yeah, hundred percent. So let's dive into the you know the the management side and specifically like you know what kind of offer because uh, there's lots of different ways to charge clients, right? There's companies that have a very low management percentage of like, you know, 10 to 15%, but then they, there's all sorts of fees that they put on top of that. There's, right. you know, there's companies that charge yeah. like 30% and there's so many ways to structure it. And I know this is something that you've, you've kind of been trying to figure out recently of like what, what's, what works best for you. So what, well, yeah, let, give us some, uh, some behind the scenes of like, what, what are you currently charging and like, how did you get to this? Yeah. Off. So basically, uh, what, I, what I found is there's like two real popular models. Um, and the first one being charging your management fee uh, or applying your management fee on the, the gross rental revenue. And then the other being uh, charging it on the net. And what that means is the gross on like you're including the cleaning fees and um you know uh and then the, the net would be excluding the cleaning fees um for us you know the, the the finding the right model it was a complete trial and error um you know we've changed it uh numerous times in the past and we'll probably change it again in the future but um you know the the main com, uh, competition for us, I guess, for clients when we first started out was uh, long term renting. So people were always comparing it to you know short term rentals to long term rentals, and um, a lot of the cases, you know, there's not as many fees with the long term rentals, um, and there's not a, there's no taxes in Canada like sales tax. So uh, when we say gross rental revenue, we, we still take out the uh, taxes and Airbnb service fees. Like we don't apply the management fee to that because you know the, the client never sees it anyways, right? So that's the two that we have used in the past. And right now I like putting it on the gross. Um, Applying it to, you know, any type of rental revenue that you get from the listing, that's the money that you've made from it, right? Um, the, a lot of the times the clients will ask about the cleaning fee, but the cleaning fee is almost more of, of a way to keep track of and making sure they have enough money to, you know, pay the cleaners, pay for cleaning supplies and so on. Um, even toiletries, if you want to work that in there, but um, it's, it's easier and simple as well. So say if you charge like 30% of gross rental revenue and you take care of, uh, the toiletries and, and some supplies, you know, that's super easy for the client to understand. And it's also easy for you to develop the, um, invoice, um, or owner statement. Um, so that's what I like right now. And yeah, like I said, it was all trial and error. Um, you know, if you, once you get into buying supplies and um, putting it on the uh, the invoices, um, it does get a little bit um, time consuming. So just putting it on the gross is it definitely save, is more efficient, I think. Right. It saves time on the creating the owner statements because that's that's a challenge that a lot of hosts have. It's, it's a big like, bottleneck. Yeah, right. It, it's it's every month it's you know it's it's i dread <laughs> doing it because it, it takes so long it's like you're so focused on you know the guest experience you're focused on you know providing value to your clients and then invoice time comes and you know it's it takes a lot of your time 
Yeah. Yeah. So that's another reason to kind of keep the, the offer very simple, right? Or the, that's right. You yeah. charge your guests or your clients very simple. So that, mm -hmm. that cuts the amount of time that you have to spend on creating. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Make so sure it's clear. Yeah. Yeah. And then and there's, you know, the, the clearer it is, the easier to understand because I think that's a good point that you're making because from our side, like everything makes sense, right? It's like, mm -hmm. there's a reason why we charge a certain way and like why we, you know, take the cleaning fee and then charge the, the percentage or we charge it over the, what we call like net from channel. So literally mm -hmm. like whatever we receive, right? Well, however way you do it, like there's a reason why you're doing it a certain way, but the client, like they might not understand that, right? Um, so there's, there's, there's some education there to the client as well, I think. And, and I know you've, you mentioned, you, you change that, you change things up a couple of times. Typically when you change things, like some clients will ask questions or they might not like it. Right. How do you, how do you yeah. deal with that? Um, well, the biggest, yeah, you have to just make sure that you're super clear and right from the get go, um, when you have a new client to go through everything with a fine tooth comb and make sure that it's, you know, ha have a good client agreement contract with everything laid out, super simple with even calculations, um, showing how you calculate your management fee. Um, but what we've been doing now to like, we've changed everything in our business, uh, you know, we implemented a new PMS and, you know, went from the co-hosting model to, you know, the, where we have all the listings under our uh, own company account, uh, which is way better for the business, way better for the client. Um, but so what we've done, and I, I highly recommend this to anybody that's considering uh, doing the management model, you have to have a clear process, I guess, or procedure on how to communicate with your clients every month, um, have a 30 minute sit down zoom call or something like that, at least, or have it scheduled. And then, um, you can go over any type of concerns or questions they have. But with us, I've sent out uh, a couple emails s s explaining the whole situation and how we're changing things. And then, I've uh, provided a Calendly link for the client so they, it's, uh, they can book a client strategy call. And once they book that, uh, we go over everything and I can share my screen and show them how it's all going to look um, going forward, which has been really good and helpful. And then some clients are hard to get a hold of. You know, everybody's busy. So, you know, a couple of times it's hard to schedule. So what I've done with that is, you know, you can just go on and, make a loom video go through everything that you want to go through with them and then you can send it to them and that's been really effective as well they really uh, do appreciate that in my experience yeah and is it um when it comes to the you know the the actual percentage that you're you're charging and what, do you, so you keep it pretty simple. Like, are there any additional fees that you charge or do you keep it very clean with the percentage? Initially we didn't charge any, um, any, a startup fee because we were doing the co-hosting model. Right. So what we, what we would do is we get a new client and we'd send them the referral link and we get a little bit of a kickback from Airbnb. And then, then we would use that as, you know, to pay for our time to get everything up and running and, it, it was you it's usually airbnb is usually pretty um generous with their referral especially now i've noticed it's gone up quite a quite a bit but now that we've moved to put everything onto our business account we have some fees that we have charged and so now we, we do charge a software fee it's pretty reasonable though it's 150 dollars a year and then some basic things that we want all of our listings to have. Uh, so we put in a, a standard or a, a mandatory, I think it's like $300 for the smart lock that we use uh, just to make sure that, you know, we have that same smart lock at all of our properties because we found that it's, it's the best smart lock to, to use. Which one is and that? It's the Yale Assure Smart Lock. Yale okay. Assure Smart Lock 2. 
now they have a, a better one. Uh, it's it's great. It it integrates with your listing and your um, it, it, it's really it's really good for security too. Um, so we use that, and then we have you know we just outline the cleaning fee, so the hourly rate of our cleaners, because initially you'll have to to go into the property and you don't know how dirty it's going to be and it's hard to just give a, a flat fee for that so we'll we'll just say the hourly however long usually they're pretty reasonable but you know sometimes you come into a house and it's just a mess and you you really gotta spend some time there and um let me just see i um what else do we have on there i think that's basically it and then we also have a hundred dollar per device um Insulation fee as well. Got it. Like if they want us to do doorbells. And you mentioned you initially were doing the co hosting model, right? Where you basically, your co host on their Airbnb listing, all the money goes straight to your clients. And then every month you invoice them for your fee. Right. And now you've switched to, you have your company Airbnb account, all the listings are on there. Mm -hmm. um, and then you're collecting all the money. And then at the end of the month, you sent your client uh, their part, correct? Right. So what is, why did you switch from that one model to the other model? Um, we switched. Uh, the, the, originally, we wanted to do the co-hosting thing because we were starting out. We wanted people to, you know, uh, trust us and make sure that, you know, they're okay with us um, managing their property. And um, what we found, there's a lot of complications as being, with being a co-host. Um, and there's a lot of uh, applications that you're unable to use as a co-host. Um, so, you know, dealing with uh, Airbnb resolution is one thing is, is difficult because they won't even call you as a co-host. They'll call the owner and they have a new policy now where if they don't get a, a, get a hold of you in an hour, they could refund the guest completely just based on uh, a complaint. Um, so... The, the resolution center is one big thing. And then revenue management, um, there's applications that you can use um, that helps with increasing the listings um, position on Airbnb. You can't use that as a co-host. And the biggest thing is using a property management software where you can create listings like say if you want to create, like you have a two apartment home and you want to create another listing for it, just ease of being able to do that without having to get the the, the listing admin or the the client to go on there and do it because a lot of them, uh, a lot of the clients uh, aren't familiar with it, right? So it it, it takes them a while. So the, the ease of that is definitely a big one. And then accounting, uh, owner statements becomes available. Um, we're setting, I have that all set up now. So it's all automated and um, clear for the client. Uh, they'll get it every, the 15th of every month. I'm super happy about that. And then, yeah, just the overall management across different OTAs. So you can list on BRBO, booking.com, Google, you know, and the biggest thing that I'm super excited about is our own direct booking website. So, um, how you structure the pricing, um, can change too. So if, if, a if a client, if you're doing the co-hosting thing with a lot of the Airbnb, uh, I'm not sure how Airbnb changes this or when they change it for hosts, but the simplified, uh, pricing. So the, we pay the entire service fee and we do that because um, it's, it's an expense. And if you pay all the expense on your side, that, that, um, you can use that, uh, as, uh, for tax purposes, right? It's, it's, uh, you can write it off. Um, if it's all the, if, if the guest is paying for it, it's not your expense, right? It's the guest's expense. Either way, it's coming off the, the price of the, the reservation. So you just, we just switched it over to our side. It's our expense. And we just, uh, altered our pricing uh, so that it's still the same price uh, per night, right? So that's another good quality. And 
so when you have that simplified, uh, I think it's like 15% the service fee that comes out of your side. And then when you put it on, say your direct booking website, you can use the same prices on your uh, pricing software so that um, you can manage it all. And then if somebody books on your direct booking website, you're automatically, it's the same price. You might offer like a 5% discount or something like that, but you're making more money on it. Right. If they book with the direct booking, because there's no Airbnb service fee. Right. But Mm -hmm. yeah, that's some of the advantages. Um, I know I've missed a few, but yeah, it's, it's so much better as a, as a manager to have it under your own account. Right. Yeah. You're in control of the money too. Right. So you don't have to wait for, for yeah. And that's another big thing too. Yeah. Cause we were floating so much of the cleaning, um, fees, right. We, we have, you know, 30 listings and it was, you know, sometimes at first we would, uh, bill for cleaning the month after. So we were always like, say if we were invoicing for June, we were paying for the cleaning fees for May. And so now we've, we've caught it all up. So if we're invoicing or if we were invoicing for June, we were paying for cleaning fees in June, but now with it all under our own account, we take all the expenses out and then what the the client gets is what was what they, um, what their profit is uh, essentially. Right. Uh, it's always nicer to like pay out the money as opposed to, you know, asking for, uh, money we find, you know, it's, um, yeah, it's just a better process. Yeah. You know, this way you don't have to chase clients for, uh, you know, <laughs> advice, essentially. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, some are quicker th- uh, than others and, but, uh, yeah. And have more questions. But it's w- one thing that I, I think if, if for anybody, if one piece of advice is to make sure that, um, like I said, everything's clear how you're, you're spending um, the money on supplies and, and who's paying for that it has to be super clear. If you're, if your clients uh, asking a bunch of questions and, and surprised about something, uh, it means, you know, there was some, there was a, there's a, a flaw in the system that you have and there wasn't something properly communicated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are there any disadvantages of switching to the model you're you, using now? Switch the disadvantages to you mean like the model, the management fee model, or do you mean uh, having it under the company? Yeah, just having all the having all the Airbnb listings under your company account, managing the money, like the way you set it up now. Like you mentioned, there's a lot of <clears throat> there's a lot of advantages to yeah versus the closed model. But are there some? What are some disadvantages? One thing that comes to mind is, uh, and I've like reviews and um, dealing with like, say if something happens where a client has to cancel a booking or take the property off, then that's a disadvantage because it's under our account and, you know, we could risk having penalties and losing super host status. So that's something that, um, we have to manage going forward and then say, if you have a, a, a property that's not performing well and say, if there's something that is broken down, like an AC unit and the client doesn't want to repair it or is not repairing it for whatever reason, then it's damaging your reputation on your account. Right. So it could bring down your rating. That's the only disadvantages that come to my mind right now. Yeah. Yeah. And it used to be the case that, yeah, no, I mean, I think this was kind of what what I was getting at and, and, you know, it used to be the case that one cancellation will cost you your super host status. Right. Yeah. I've now changed that fortunately, because it was such a, you know, it was a stupid rule in my opinion. Um, you know, for one cancellation, you know, just lose your, your status, I think was, was a bit extreme. Now they changed it to 1%. Your cancellation rate has to be below 1%, right? Right. So yeah, if you get the occasional, you know, occasional cancellation, like, you know, you know, yeah. 
you know, it's not the end of the world. You're not losing your your, the, host, your super host status, but no, it's definitely a concern. You know, I think there's a risk factor as well, right? Um, if for whatever reason, you know, God forbid that Airbnb would ever decide to deactivate your account or pause your account for whatever reason, yeah, it would affect all your listings. But at the same time, and, and you mentioned the disadvantage too is like, yeah, if you have, let's say, you have a client who, uh, you know doesn't keep up in sort of repairs or like, you know, hard to communicate with or mm -hmm. whatever that is, it's now going to affect your, your company account. But at the same time, that's also a driver to, to really like think about like, who do we want to work with and really set their standards. Right. Yeah. A hundred percent. Um, that's super important to make sure you're clear again, right from the get-go when you meet your potential client or when you're going through the contract or even you can even have some type of verbiage in the contract about it but you know you have to be clear that you're in the business of providing quality experiences to guests and the client has to have that goal as well and want to uh, help you with providing that so, you know, if they're, if the AC unit is broken and it's, you know, 40 degrees out or something and they don't want to uh, fix it, or if there's um, some type of furniture that is broken down and, they, and they're not replacing it, it's, it's just going to cause a lot of headaches and it's going to make your business um, look bad as well, right? People are going to look at the brand and, and see that, oh, stay there and have a bad experience at a, at a we host property. It's not something that we we want. So it's definitely something that we have a conversation about right away. Um, and I think, uh, our clients right now are all pretty good about that mm -hmm. for sure. Did you get yeah. any pushback from any of your clients when you switched from co-hosting to the way you do it now? Uh, I wouldn't say pushback. I would just say a lot of uh, questions. Uh, I do, you know, it's, it's better for the client. I, I think they're going to make more money for sure. And the direct booking website, if we can grow that up to say, you know, 20% or more of our bookings, uh, it's just going to be more money for the client, right? The, the, the service fee, the money that we're saving from the service fee, I'm, I'm, you know, we're not taking any service fee from the direct booking I think the only service that we'll have to charge is the uh, payment. So the Stripe mm -hmm. fee basically. Right. Yeah. But we're passing that all on to the client. So um, yeah, I, I think we haven't had no pushback yet. There's a, a couple of clients that uh, we still have our strategy call with, but um, no pushback so far, just a lot of questions to make sure they, that they understand, you know, what, what's, um, what's changing. And that's something that I, I made clear right away. I sent out an email, you know, with a, like not a amendment, but a, a picture of our, the, the specific sections of our contract that's changing. Right. And highlighted, you know, the money is going to be deposited in our account first. Then we pay you out on the 15th of every month with our owner statements. So, and you know what, that's um, how traditionally all property managers work in the long-term market, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's nothing new. It's just, you know, I, I feel like the co-hosting model is, is something that started with, you know, Airbnb. It's kind of Airbnb gave birth to that. And it's something that you almost, most people just start with and then they realize the complications to it. And then as they grow, they move into something more like this mm -hmm. when they become a, like a bona fide company. Yeah. I think one reason that some people still opt for that co-hosting model is, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll find a client who's been doing Airbnb for a while. And you know, the client has an Airbnb listing and has 200 reviews. Yeah. And then the client would say like, Hey, I already have this Airbnb listing. There were 200 reviews. It doesn't make sense to start a new Airbnb listing. Right. You ever get that? feedback or? yeah um that's a, a question that we have a, a lot you know what do you if you have somebody that comes with a um a listing with a bunch of reviews and it's and you know and they want you to manage it 
Um, it doesn't bother me. I, I, I'm not too concerned with having to say to the client, you know, we, we will we'll no longer, we won't be using that listing. We'll be creating a new listing under our uh, brand because their listing, uh, you know, could be a completely different thing. You know, once it's under our management, it, it's, you know, it's our brand, it's our uh, way of doing things. So it, it's almost a start fresh, right? And the argument about that would be, you know, what about traffic? But, you know, I've created lots of listings and I've seen the boost that new listings get on Airbnb. So I'm not too concerned with, with that, but yeah, yeah, it, it, it will be starting all the listings under their company account going forward. But I, I can understand why people do the co-hosting thing for that. And then, but you know, some States and some provinces, uh, the co-hosting model is something people have to do because they don't, they're not able to have it under their own account due to, you know, licensing mm -hmm. and uh, the, the regulation. Right. So if you, in some States and some provinces, you have to have a realtor's license to take, uh, to handle the money side of things. And if you have it under your company account, you're handling the money. If you have it under the co-hosting, uh, if you're doing the co-hosting model, you're not handling all the money. The money is going to the client and then they're handling it, yeah. you know? So that's uh, one workaround I've, I've heard for that as well. So you're, how's that in Canada? Is that, is, is that different in different States or is that the same across the Yeah. Country? So, yeah, it's, it's this, it's like that. I think it's province to province. It's, mm. it's different. I think in Ontario, you have to have a realtor's license and the same thing in BC in in uh, Newfoundland, you do not. Uh, and in Alberta you do. So we do have some, uh, co-hosting accounts still in, uh, in Alberta. Okay. Yeah. Cause I was, that's a, yeah. the next question was going to be, does, is it defined as to where your company is located, where you're registered, or is it where the listing is located? Uh, it's where the listing is located. Right. And I, I was just thinking about it now. I think we have just one client in Alberta and the rest are uh, still master leases. Right. So that's another way that you can still host in, in Alberta without having a realtor's license right. is to, to, through the master leasing. Yeah. And I guess, yeah. I don't know, this is, I'm just kind of thinking out loud, but like, is there, mm. is there a way to, let's say you have a client who's in one of those States. And so you want to, so you have to do the master lease, right? I guess you could still yeah. calculate what they would have earned as a, as a management client, and then just kind of adjust the monthly rent based on that. Yeah, I thought about that. I, it's funny you say that because I have thought about that in, in previous. Like you could set up um, some type of contract, uh, almost like a tenancy agreement with some type of, I don't know, would you call it profit sharing or, or something like that? Honestly, this is the first time this has come to my mind because I was just thinking about it as you were talking about it. Yeah, I've thought about I definitely thought about that. Um, but I, I don't think I would like to do that because we're taking all the risk. I feel like on the, on the mass releasing side of it. Yeah. I'm not, true. I'm not a big fan of the mass releasing <laughs> anymore. I'm, not, not very many. I, people I know are. you guys aren't really, <laughs> yeah, you guys aren't really uh, keen on it either. Um, so we're generally just sticking to management now going forward and uh, ownership. Yeah. Yeah. Makes yeah. Sense. The goal uh, eventually is, you know, boutique hotel type of style. So yeah, tell us a little bit more about the the brand we host. Um, is that is that an important? Are you focused on like really building that brand? Yeah, we're we're super focused on it. Um, th that's why we called it uh, we host. We didn't we wanted to keep it open um, so that you can use it in any province or anywhere the the main idea from WeHost came from you know me being in Alberta and being from Newfoundland and m managing from the west to east coast type of style so that's where WeHost came from it's kind of a double meaning uh 
but I, what property we focus on is inner city family homes. Most of our, most of them are about three bedrooms, three bedrooms. And, um, so that's predominantly what we focus on inner city. We didn't do too much of, you know, even through COVID, a lot of people got really, uh, or the uh, country stays, I guess, out rural got really popular, but we still focused on growing our inner city because we, we figured it was going to bounce back with a vengeance, <laughs> <laughs> which it did in 2022. It was just an amazing year. Um, but yeah, that's what we're focusing on, uh, providing, you know, quality stays for traveling families that are, you know, either visiting to um, visit their family or uh, visiting for project or, or work type travel. Gotcha. Uh, that's most of our clients now. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been going pretty good. I'm, I'm super happy that we're, it's, things are going the way they are. It seems like, uh, we're building momentum. Right. That's awesome. Yeah. I've, no, I've noticed that over the, yeah. over the last couple of months, um, see you making a lot of changes and really leading everything in a positive direction. So it's been great to kind of follow that journey. Yeah. I've been working a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it, it's, I, I, re I really like, um, the, the, why we started uh, focusing on St. John's Newfoundland, um, is because we really, I, I really love that city and, the houses there are super unique. Um, they, they have the, like the jelly bean row style homes. I don't know if you ever heard of those or have looked at some of my listings, but they're all very colorful mm -hmm. homes, um, all on a hill that goes down to the Harbor. And I think the history of it is, you know, boats coming in. It's so foggy in St. John's super foggy. It's called fog city. And they'd look up and they can see their, their house, right. Their, their pink house or their mm -hmm. blue house. And then it just got that name, you know, jelly bean roast all homes and uh, people love them. It's a big tourist attraction. I think it's, I think it's one of the best kept secrets in Canada that uh, St. John's city. So Not anymore. we're super happy to, <laughs> to be growing there. I think, I can, I think we have like 16 or, or 19 listings there now. So right on. Yeah. I have to come visit. Yeah. Like, we have somebody else's in our Yeah, you should. Who's also in St. John's, which is interesting because it's a small place, right? Yeah, it's um, probably, I'd say 500,000 people in the province and I'd say 200,000, something like that in St. John's right. itself. Yeah. So it's a, it's a small city, but uh, the tourism is pretty, pretty strong. We get a lot of um, Europeans and a lot of Americans coming up. Um, especially from, uh, there's a play called come from away that, um, was, uh, is about what happened in nine 11 when all the, you know, the planes got routed to a place in, in Newfoundland called Gander. And, uh, it was just how Newfoundlanders showed so much hospitality and, and, um, they made a play play about it. And it was number one on Broadway for a long time. So it was a great, um, great, uh, attractor mm. for sure. All right. Uh, one last question. Mm, this is sure. really a difficult one, but, uh, aside, yeah. aside of outside of everything we've already talked about, like if somebody's listening to this podcast right now and thinks, you know what, I'm going to get into management. What's, what would be your yes. number one piece of advice? Um, clarity and I, I think I've said it so many times in this podcast already, but you know, never, never manage somebody else's property without a agreement and contract in place. Um, don't just willy nilly start managing somebody else's property and really think about, you know, how are you going to communicate with the client going forward and in your contract detail every type of expense and who's responsible for it. Like I said, if you give them an invoice, however, however you're doing, it, if you're doing the co-hosting or if you're doing uh, all the uh, 
um, listings under your uh, ma management account, um, you, they shouldn't be surprised by anything. So uh, that's uh, the biggest uh, advice I would I would say to have is to have a clear contract with everything, including you know any, any type of expense, so that um, it's it's clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you know I would I would say right away have it under I, I wouldn't even do the co-hosting model anymore. Uh, I would just start right away with using you know a PMS and then have it under your your account and then that way. Um, it's easier for you to manage and more effective and you can ultimately provide the best value that way. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. So if people want to, and yeah, yeah, last one. No, 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 you go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, if people want <laughs> to, um, if people are interested in traveling to new phone, new found land and in particular St. John's or the other places where you uh, host, like where can, where can people find you if they, or if people want to work with you, uh, as a management client yeah we host canada.ca is our website uh, you can go on there see our listings send us a message and we can hook you up with uh, a jelly bean roll home and um, also you can reach out to me at uh, david at we host canada.ca directly um, i also want to mention too um, you know i've said this to you before but listening to this podcast i've learned so much and I really want to keep the, the culture going. So, you know, I, I've told you that I've, I've reached out to people that have been on your podcast and they've helped me, uh, with my business and gave me, and even gave me walkthroughs, got hopped on calls, for no cost to, to, you know, it was, is I want to keep that going. So if anybody has, you know, a question or needs help with their business or, anything like that. I'm, I'm free to help and, you know, kind of pay it forward. So definitely reach out to me, David at wehostcanada.ca. And, uh, with anything, you know, any type of process with your cleaning or if there's uh, some type of bottleneck you're going through, I can definitely help you out with that because yeah, it's, it's super, um, it's great when you're going through something that's racking your brain and then, somebody is just there to, to walk you through it and help you because they've done it before, you know? So yeah, I definitely want to pay it forward. Awesome, man. Appreciate that. So, uh, well, if you're listening, you have a challenge, take advantage. David at wehousecanada.com. Yeah. Free, free stuff. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. No, that's awesome yeah. to hear that, that, uh, that you reached out to some, some, I hear that more often. Actually, I mentioned that to you. Like, I think that's really cool that, uh, you yeah. know, people reach out, to each other and like there's so many people that who, who just want to help out right um mm -hmm. this is, which is awesome to see yeah yeah i think we, the, the, he helped me with uh, our cleaning process and it's something that we've been using ever since and it's great yeah yeah we, and we recommend it to others it's it's awesome um but yeah just back to the uh the model that we're using right now again i just wanted to say um management model fee on gross rental revenue i think is is the way to go is where it's at right now yeah Boom. and then figure out what percentage i think it's anywhere from 20 percent to 30 percent right now i've heard of 40 percent before have you ever heard of people charging 40 percent? yeah i mean s certain markets you know like certain like really high-end markets where there's not a lot of operators sometimes you see that but it's, I think, you know, and this is something that we spoke <clears throat> with, um, shout out to Lucas uh, Krauss, who was on the podcast and he, CEO of Skyrun, yes. he came into our mastermind. I think you were on that call and he said something that was very interesting on this, on the topic of what, what's your fee going to be? Cause, cause he said, sometimes it's just kind of market dependent, right? Uh, you can't always like, yes. set your yeah. own, you have to see like what's, you know, common in your marketplace. Uh, but definitely hundred percent. I think definitely the other takeaway from that was too like don't don't undercharge, right? Um, it's better to charge yeah. a higher fee and deliver a world class experience uh, to your clients. In the end of the day, I think that model works better than trying to undercut the competition mm -hmm. and trying to like you know charge uh, yeah. a minimum premium and be that be let that be like the the reason why people would choose you is just because you're the cheapest one versus like you know, yeah the best experience. I appreciated when he said, 
you don't want to be the low cost uh, person, right? They want to be, you know, they want to be uh, fairly compensated, I guess, for the, the level of service that they're providing. And I can totally get that. Um, and, you know, if, if somebody did start off and, and say if you're, you look at it and you're charging your, your clients, you know, well below market rate, it's, it's not the end of the world. Um, you can always, you know, change your fee going forward. Say, you know, unfortunately, you know, if you, if you look at the numbers and, you know, it's, it's hard to be profitable. Like, like, uh, Lucas said, you know, you have, maybe you have a hundred thousand dollar business and you're profitable, but then you can have a million dollar business that's not profitable too. Right. So if you look at it and it's, you, you know, it's, it's just not working. You can go to your clients and just say, Hey, you know, we're changing things up. Uh, we're going to have to increase our uh, management fee a little bit based on the numbers. And, you know, hopefully that um, your clients will understand, but uh, yeah, as long as you're pro providing the best service and the best value, I'm, I'm sure it'll be all good. Right. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. I, you know, I always think of, uh, I had a business mentor one time and he told me a very important lesson. He said, uh, give people what you want and they'll pay for it. Right. So yeah, it's, I like the mindset of saying, thinking like, okay, let me, let me focus on what my clients, and this is true for any business, right? How do I give mm -hmm. my clients what they want? Right. And, and then if you do that, like you can charge, you know, higher, um, higher fees for it. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. Cool, man. Yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. Dude, I appreciate you uh, yeah, well, being on the podcast. I know this is your first podcast. Yeah, I appreciate you. Go? Yeah, it was it was my first podcast ever. Um. Uh, yeah, it was it was good. I I'm super again honored to for you to ask me on here. I was I, I remember saying Sam, uh, my wife, just you know like yeah, I'd love to be on that podcast someday. <laughs> and here I am. So <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. All right. It's been great. Sweet, dude. Appreciate it again. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, and to the listeners, hope you learned something from this episode. And uh, we'll be back another time with the next episode. So we'll see you soon.